Hey, this is Steve, V6WZ. Hey, over the last while, I've had a number of emails uh, with guys asking questions about how I switch and select by various beverages in the field. Let's talk about that. You know, over the years, I've built a number of different switching boxes and, and methods for switching in the field. You know, I'm going to talk about all of those as well as my new redesign for the circuit board I'm using uh, uh, today. Um, and also talk about deployment of the coax, especially distribution coax in the field. Now, this is a Google Earth view of my uh, QTH. I've got all eight compass directions covered by either single wire or broadside phased pairs. And in the field, I have two uh, uh, sw switch boxes of, to select uh, four individual wires each. Let's go out in the field and I'll show you what they look like. I'm in what I call the East beverage box. I have two of these. The other one I call the West box. Uh, just a cheap storage bin from the home building store. Uh, you know, I'll uh, put a couple screws to, uh, you know, hold the, uh, the cover on. Uh, you know, it just helps in uh, weather protection for the uh, switch box, which is mounted inside. Coax and control lines are come up from below. Uh, just dug in and hammered in a uh, two by four and screwed it to that. So as I said, from the switch box here, I've uh, chosen to trench the uh, main coax feed line together with the Cat 5 control line uh, back through the forest. You know, trenching in the forest wasn't easy. It's not really the best way to go, you know, the trencher, even though I had a big ditch witch, it kind of gets hung up in the in the roots. Hey, one other thing, um, you know, you could just use RG6, but I scored this three quarter inch uh, Cat cable TV hard line from the local uh, cable company. You know, I went to their main yard and, and asked if they had any, uh, you know, uh, end of spool uh, cable i got over three thousand feet of it one run was over a thousand feet and it was free they said yeah just go ahead and take it so you know it's the you know it's a foam filled uh you know with a hard aluminum uh outside pretty 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 good stuff for uh for this purpose although truthfully loss isn't a problem you know rg6 would be fine in most cases this happens to be my west box as I mentioned, from each box, I'll have four wires selected. Well, in this case, I have uh, two single wires and uh, two broadside pairs. You know, uh, what I've found over the years uh, has worked best for uh, deploying the coax to the individual wires is not to just lay the wires directly on the ground and exposed. I found that, you know, critters will come and eat them, and I, I've had a few bit wires. So what I've done, which I found to be a lot easier, is I'll lay, the, I'll, clear, I'll spend the time to clear a, a spot, and then on top of the coax, I'll just lay deadfall, okay? You can see the logs here. I'll just find a bunch of law along uh, trees, deadfall, and I'll just lay them on top of the coax. And you know, I got to tell you, I found that to be really effective. You know, it provides protection. It prevents animals from eating the wire. And you know, it's actually pretty easy to uh, to deploy and to to set up in the field. There are a couple of different ways to switch your beverages. Uh, one way would be to switch at the high impedance point, in other words, before the matching transformer. Uh, this really isn't recommended, uh, you know, because it can cause, you can end up with some crosstalk between the two wires, because obviously both uh, beverage wires or a third wire, uh, you know, the, the down leads would have to be very close to each other, obviously, and, and I think that could lead to uh, crosstalk between the wires. I did do this and have done it years ago, and uh, I really don't think it's recommended. Uh, the, the preferred method is to switch, of course, on the low impedance side. That is to say, each beverage wire will have its own matching transformer, be somewhat separated, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 feet apart uh, from each other on their preferred support for the takeoff point. Each have their own match box with uh, RG6 coax feed line going to the switch box. What I choose to do, and you'll see on all of my designs, is using a double pole, double throw relay, I'll switch both the center conductor and the uh, sheet in order to minimize uh, common mode so that no uh, unused shields are still connected to the system. The relays I use for switching my beverages are the Omeron G5V-2. Uh, uh, and these are a double pole, double throw, hermetically sealed relay. And uh, as I say, I've been using them for years and they've been proven to be very reliable, not just for switching my beverages, but also my other receive antennas like my nine circle receive array, as well as uh, other RF switching applications, low signal switching uh, throughout my remote station. You know, what you don't want to do is use an open frame, old school type open frame relay. These can give you contact uh, reliability issues uh, when exposed to inclement weather. You know, the relays are pretty affordable too. You know, I, I don't know, you can find lots of other vendors that would carry them. I get my a digikey you know you buy them in bulk they're you know uh, around three dollars a unit uh, 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 Canadian dollars
This is a KiCad schematic of one of my more recent Switchbox designs. In this case, I'm using two cascaded relays uh, in series on any one selected antenna uh, in order to maximize isolation. You know, I've since moved away from this, and actually my most recent uh, rendition of my switch boxes only use a single relay. I don't really think I need this much isolation. I suppose if you were in a contest environment where you had high signal levels on unused beverages, this might be uh, uh, beneficial. Uh, this is what the switch box looks like. Um, uh, and uh, this particular design, I ended up uh, uh, designing the circuit board with a rather large footprint. Uh, and I've, I've since redesigned this uh, KiCad file um, to uh, still include the two individual cascaded relays per channel, but I've, I've shrunk the board to economize and also just to make it more compact. In all cases, I'll uh, choose to individually switch with a Cat5 control line to activate any one uh, relay to uh, select that antenna. This is my West box. I'm actually today just out here going to switch out my old uh, switch box for my new design. Uh, you'll notice in this case, I've got these large type 31 clamp on toroids uh, to provide common mode isolation. That's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to show you my new design that integrates, um, uh, uh, you know, a one-to-one -one, uh, braid breaker transformer on the board to eliminate this. You know, it's, it kind of takes up a lot of room and it's also kind of costly. Uh, whereas my new design is, uh, is a lot more affordable and a lot easier to deploy. This is my KiCad schematic for the new Switchbox design. In this case, I'm using only single relays instead of the cascaded relays. And as I just showed, in order to eliminate that uh, costly, those costly Type 31 clamp-on toroids in the field to eliminate common mode noise, I'm including these one-to-one -one transformers or uh, braid breakers. They're simply uh, four turns to four turns uh, wound on a binocular core. They're included on not only each individual beverage line, but also on the uh, output to the uh, rig. The other thing you'll notice is a series of RF chokes uh, throughout on each uh, coax line, uh, as well as on the braid. And that's because I do send, I need to send a voltage uh, down the lines to uh, control my broadside beverage uh, switch box. And of course, I also have associated blocking capacitors on the primary of the uh, transformer. Here's the PCB board for that uh, new switch box. I use a company called OSH Park out of uh, Oregon to have my PCB boards made. I designed them on uh, KiCad. By the way, what I will do is at the bottom of the video, I'll include some uh, KiCad files if you ever wanted to uh, build some of these yourself, both for this particular design using the braid breakers or the other design using the cascaded relays. Here's that relay board mounted in the box, ready to go in the field. Uh, like I do in a lot of my projects, I tend to mount the uh, circuit board on the lid of the box. I find that really convenient. Uh, this is the board populated with the associated um, binocular core braid breaker transformers and the relays shown here, uh, populated with quite a number of uh, RF chokes. And um, the control voltages are just used in these um, uh, number eight stainless steel screws to uh, provide the voltage to control each individual uh, relay. In order to mount the box in the field, what I'll often do is just uh, drill a couple of holes, pilot holes in the back of the box, and then screw this right into the weatherproof box uh, in the field. Then I just simply screw the cover on with the associated uh, switching. I have had a few emails with guys asking me how I affect the switching of the relays in my switch boxes. As shown in the schematic, all my relay boxes are the same, and that is there is an individual 12-volt control line required to activate each relay. And that's played against ground. So we really just need a 12 volt signal on any one line to activate that relay. I find it really handy to use a Cat5 buried uh, cable out to each switch box. I mean, that provides us with eight conductors, which is more than we need. We only need four for this switch box, but it's nice to, uh, and handy to have those extra conductors for other things. In my case, I do need some control voltages for my broadside pairs, for example. The simplest way to switch this, of course, is just use a rotary switch, you know, the old analog method. Mount a rotary switch in a box and basically uh, 12 volts will get distributed to each individual wire associated with each, uh, each relay. Pretty, uh, pretty simple, you know, these, these uh, rotary switches are readily available from any of the electronic supply houses. My station is a purpose-built remote location, so I need to be able to control everything, including the receive antennas, uh, remotely. I do that with the PC located at the uh, shack, uh, at the remote, and I log in through something called TeamViewer, or you could use any remote desktop application. In fact, this is what we're looking at now, is the PC at the remote. 
Uh, these compass dials are uh, how I switch my antennas. The yellow dial, by the way, is the, my nine circle receiver A. This green dial, which I'm selecting now, is selecting my beverages. So anytime I click the northeast, that's automatically selecting the northeast beverage uh, in the field or the east or the southeast. This is a program called PST Rotator. It's a great program and what it does is not only control my main rotor, but it has the ability to control uh, eight uh, relay USB boards. So when by controlling the board by clicking here, I'm able to then select whatever relay I want uh, in the field. Let me show you what it looks like in the shack at the remote. That's what I call my relay control panel board. Got a bunch of my different relay controllers on here. Uh, this one down here at the bottom, that's for my nine circle receiver array. This one up here is for my 160 meter parasitic transmitter array. And this one here is for the beverages, in fact. And, you know, it's a Denkove board. Any one of the eight individual relays when activated will activate that uh, specific wire. You can even see I've uh, stuffed uh, some diodes in here, some isolation diodes as, as needed. Um, and so this board is controlled by the PST rotator program on the PC. So this is that same Google Earth uh, image that I showed at the start of the video. This shows my various beverages. I have all eight compass directions covered. Uh, you know, switched either from the east box or the west box, four relays in each. But therefore what I need to do is select either the east or the west uh, feed line. And I've got a box in the shack. I'll show you what that looks like. This is the entry panel into the shack. You notice on the bottom left there's an aluminum box. That's my selection box. Uh, the coax lines, uh, line either going to the east beverage box or the west be beverage box is uh, selected in there. It's not fancy. I just got a dead bug mounted uh, signal relay in there to, uh, to affect the switch. Here's a simplistic sketch of the Denkovi board uh, switching logic. The board is represented here with all uh, eight relays identified. In the case of the east switch box, the feed line going there is always uh, selected on that box I showed in the shack. So all I need to do is send the appropriate voltage to the appropriate CAT5 line to select that relay in that east box. The west box though, I need to activate that relay in the shack that I just showed you. So I need to include a, a signal to, for, that, uh, for that relay. And then the individual uh, uh, relays in the west box will be, um, also receive their voltage. Of course, get to know how to use reverse bias or blocking diodes to help you out in a case like this. Hey guys, that's it. Hopefully this has helped out and given you some ideas and maybe answered any questions you might have had. Look, every installation is going to be unique and unlikely to be uh, the same as what I've done here. But maybe, as I say, at the very least it'll give you some ideas. By the way, this is a view of my remote right now. I'm looking at one of my security cameras uh, uh, fr from the remote and uh, looks like a nice day up there. I think I'm going to head up there in a couple days and do some more beverage work. 73, Steve, V6WZ.